All right, here we go, man. The process of purchasing a resale property, taxes and fees. Ooh, this ain't going to be fun. Nah, guys, it's going to be fun, right? This is the steps towards purchasing your property and becoming a free agent. So let's get excited, all right? So here we go. Taxes and transfer fees, right? The fees for selling a property vary based on the actual age or length of ownership of a property, but typically range from around 2 to 7%. Here are the fees and costs you need to be aware of when selling your property in Thailand. So when you're selling it, guys, beware. Transfer fees, which is fixed at 2% of the property price. The land office will calculate this transfer fee from either the agreed sales price in the sales and purchase contract or the appraised price that the land office defines, whichever is the higher amount. So if the land office defines a higher or the purchase price, the market price, or whatever you purchase the property, whichever is higher, that's where we're basing that 2 to 7% off. The land office updates their prices every four years, meaning that the appraised value is generally lower than the transacted value. Okay. So just like in America, your set value for your property is usually lower than the market value. And this transfer fee can be split by both parties or paid fully by one. There is no hard and fast legal rule on this, although typically it is split 50-50 between buyer and seller. Okay, typically, guys. And stamp duty is fixed. All right, so stamp duty is another one. And it's fixed at 0.5% of the property sale value at the time of purchase and at the transfer land office. This is only due if the owner has had the property for more than five years and is not required if ownership was for five years or less. So if he had it for more than five years, then he's going to have to get that stamp duty. And this fee is typically paid fully by the seller. Seller, guys. So be careful if somebody's trying to tell you, hey, man, pay this for me. Business tax, a.k.a. specific tax business, SBT, is 3.3% on the value, broken down as 3% on business tax, and an additional 10% added for a municipal tax, only applicable on properties if the seller has had the property for less than five years. And otherwise, this fee is not applicable. OK, so this is applicable if the sellers have had the property for less than five years. Typically, it is paid in full by the seller again. OK, business tax by the seller, SBT by the seller, typically without tax holding. And so withholding tax, WHT, also considered income tax. This is nearly always paid by the seller. It is in preparation for the property seller's income tax. This typically ranges anywhere from 5 to 35 percent and varies depending on the length you have held the property. The longer you have owned it, the more taxes that apply. For companies that W or for companies, the WHT is fixed at 1 percent of the appraised price linked to WHT. Shout outs to the withholding tax explained. Now we're going to finish out the rest of the transfer. Yeah. Taxes and transfer fees will finish out and then we'll come back to the withholding tax explained. We're going to go to explain that. And there are other processing small fees may be applicable to around 300 Thai baht in value to be paid at the land office. As a seller, we suggest accounting for up to 7% to the sales price as land office cost and not including any agency commission or WHT tax payments. Example, on a 10 million bot unit, and they break down what those fees would look like. So as you see, stamp duty, if they hold it under five, it's zero. If they go over five, 50,000, 50,000, et cetera, on that $10 million Thai bot unit. All right, now, here it is with the 3.3, with the SBT, that business tax, in the first five years, yeah, that's 330, boom, boom, boom. But if they hold it longer, then it's zero. It's kind of like in America, I guess, when we have that, you know, the longer you hold it, long and short-term gains. 
and they're both taxed at different rates and then withholding tax. And then as you can see, it greatly increases once you have held or have held the property over that five year period. And total tax payable. And then you shall see the differences of the years and the holding periods and et cetera, and how they all kind of chart out at the end. And then lease registration fee is fixed at a 1%, 1.1% of contract or appraised value. And this is only applicable when registering leasehold contracts with the land office, along with all of the above fees associated, stamps and SBT and WHT. And this is for leases, registrations, and this is saying for land office, so lease registration fees, right? Okay, gotcha. Now let's go back to that withholding tax explain. Bloop, bloop. Here we go. We're going to finish out with these bad boys. Withholding slash income tax example. Personal income tax is the main tax to be aware when selling a property in Thailand. Depending on your annual income, taxation will range from zero up to 35%. See the chart below. And this is payable to the Thai government land office upon the sale of your property on the appraised value or the contract value whichever is higher. And it takes into account how many years you have owned the property, as we've seen previously on that chart. Furthermore, sellers also need to take into account the deductible expenses shown below. The baseline taxable rate is derived from the gross income, the gross income minus the deductible expenses resulting in the net income figure. And this figure is where the personal income tax is calculated from. Well, that's good, guys. It's not the overall gross price, it's the net. So this is good. Example, withholding tax, WHT and income tax. Givens, and he says condo with a government appraised at 6.6 .6 million. Yeah, 6.6 .6 million Thai bot. And seller has owned a property for three years, 77% standard deduction of expenses. Okay, so there goes the sheets. There goes the calculation. Let me kind of zoom in. And for those listening in, it kind of just goes throughout the years of the standard deduction of expenses and how it reduces over the years. And then the resale of condo unit and personal income tax schedule. And it increases as you get higher in that income from zero all the way to five million. There we go. And so here goes some examples of some calculations, right? If we take 6.6 .6 million baht and then subtract that 77%, we're left with 1.5 million baht and 1.5 million baht divided by the three equals 511,000 yearly ass uh, accessible income. And then you got the part B, yearly accessible income of 511K. And then the first 300,000, 5%, the second 200,000, 10%, and the remaining amount for uh, 11,000 times 15%. So guys, it's really breaking down into different brackets. So it's not much about saying like, okay, 5 million, tax me straight 35. No, each amount totaling up to your highest cost has its own proper bracket for each of those dollars. So if it's from zero, so let's say it's up to five hundred thousand, from zero to three hundred is five percent, from three hundred thousand to five hundred thousand is ten percent, and then boom, that's how it goes. So three hundred thousand on the first three hundred thousand tie bot income, and then for the next three hundred to five hundred thousand, which is almost two hundred thousand, you're going to times that by ten percent. So that's that that's how it goes. It's brackets. It's kind of almost like it's done in America, okay? And this is important for you guys because if you want to sell your property, you're going to have to worry about it, okay? And then the last point right here is capital gain tax. Thailand does not have a specific capital gains tax law. Instead, income derived by way of capital gains is dealt with under the income tax law, which prescribes that capital gains income is a type of accessible income subject to income tax. Okay, wow. So, you know, we have a difference, at least as far as my understanding and how I do it in America is 
capital gains and then income. And I always talk about that, right, guys? I talk about capital gains, short-term, long-term capital gains. Then I talk about portfolio income, passive income, earned income. And so what they do here in this explain, uh, the, the way it's been explained is the capital gains goes underneath this narrative right here, which is called that withholding slash income tax example. And so shout out to them for explaining that. So I hope you guys get a better understanding. And then again, that's the taxes and transfer fees of a real estate deal when you're purchasing a property, a resale property. All right. So if we go back and it might be different for other properties, we're not quite sure. But as far as right now, that's what we got. And so we're going to cover more. We're going to cook cover what happens in the process from buying from a developer also. So when we get to that part, we'll read it. And if it reflects, then there you go. If not, then we'll figure out and talk through that. But shout outs to everybody. Thanks for tuning in for another one. This was a part of the segment of purchase or the process of purchasing a resale property, but this was about the taxes and fees. So thank you for watching Real Escape Thailand, and I'll see you on the next one.